Okay. So shall we go ahead and get going then? It's about five after. Um, I think Taylor, you had volunteered to share the, the meeting notes. Is that correct? Or did I miss here? Ah, there we go. Thank you so very much. I do appreciate it, Taylor. So <clears throat> we'll, we, as usual, we start with events. So we have recurring events. You can get them on the Network Service Mesh community site. Um, so there's this meeting that happens every week at 8 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays. Um, we also have an NSM documentation meeting that happens in the same time slot on Wednesdays every week. And an NSM use case meeting that happens on the second, fourth, and fifth Mondays. Um, you know, between at the 8 a.m. time slot Pacific. And on the Mondays you don't have that, you have a sister organization, the CNCF uh, Telecom Users Group that happens on the first and third Mondays at 8 a.m. All right, excellent. And then coming up, we do have some talk proposals in, I believe, for DPDK user space in Bordeaux, France, coming up in September. Um, we do have a request over a direct message from the Open Core Summit folks um, asking if people would be willing to submit a network service mesh talk. So if you are interested in going to Open Core Summit in September in San Francisco, um, please do submit a talk. We've got the Open Networking Summit Europe coming up in Antwerp, Belgium. That CFP is closed. We have a number of talks that have been submitted about NSF, NSM plus CNFs. Um, we've got Bratislav has submitted a talk on the forwarder plus kernel efforts. Ivana has submitted a talk on SMI plus NSM integration. So there's a lot of exciting talks happening there. Um, we have the Open Source Summit coming up in Lyon. And Nikolai, Radoslav, and Ivana are submitting talks there, I believe. Do we know what those talks are about, Nikolai? Um, yeah, so uh, mine was about share, sharing my experience for building uh, uh, CNF on top of uh, on top of NSM and uh, VPP. Okay. Uh, Rostov and Ivana, I believe that they, they submitted the joint talk. Is any one of them here? Yeah, we submitted a joint talk with Ivana that is an introduction to NSM. Awesome. Intro talks are always good. Um, <laughs> and and it, it, it helps getting them from multiple different uh, perspectives because the, the more ways that, you, that these things get explained to people and the more of them we capture up on YouTube, uh, the easier it is for everyone to wrap their heads around it. Not everyone understands everything in the same way. And so um, having different perspectives is super helpful. Cool. So we've got Is This a Con coming up in Sofia. And it looks like, Ivana, you have a talk that's accepted. Is that correct? Do we have Ivana on the call today? Mm, no, but she, but yeah, her talk is accepted. Awesome. It would be great to get a link to the talk here. <clears throat> so uh, that we, yeah, OK. Yep. And and is did Radoslav also have a talk submitted? No, I didn't manage to, to submit one. This happens. Yeah. OK, that's cool. Yeah, the link would be great, because then it, it becomes easier to promote it in social media and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> All right. So we've got the KubeCon coming up, and that is closing very quickly in 10 days. So we should probably do uh, put together a shared doc and get that out to the mailing list and start collecting um, talk ideas this week. Uh, so we can talk about them in next week's meeting and make sure to get them in. Um, we do get at KubeCon either two 35-minute tracks or one 85-minute talk uh, for Network Service Mesh by virtue of being a CNCF project. Um, in the past, we split these into two 35 minutes, like an intro and a deep dive. I think, Nikolai, you were advocating, I think, quite wisely that we may want to combine them into one longer talk. Um, so that we can definitely also sort out, and we need to figure out what the what that looks like. Um, and then I do want to make sure you've got here, Nikolai, you and Yang, you are submitting uh, a talk for QCon North America as well? Uh, yes, and this... Uh... I there is uh, essentially Taylor. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> 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 uh, 
there was a tiny bit of ambiguity. Um, <laughs> cool. So I'll try and get out today the the sort of the traditional let's all share in a doc ideas for CFPs. So mm -hmm. if folks want to collaborate there together, we definitely can. Um, it, it often helps. And if you just want to submit your own talk without participating in that process, please feel free as well. Uh, anything that gets more talk submitted is good for us. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, the actually the, the deadline is next Friday from what I can, yeah. Mm -hmm. The 12th, um, about 10 days. Yeah. So we, we do have to get on that, but um, it, we still have enough time that I think we can get it pulled together. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, can we can we do panels? So like, I mean, because uh, essentially, if we're getting one like eighty-five minutes, like long, mm -hmm. uh, can uh, like the birds of a feather type of session, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think we we should, and I think we should probably get that a little more organized than we traditionally have, in terms of finding a place and and that kind of thing. Yeah, okay, my, my, my main question here is, do you think that, that we, we can have the three of us, like me, Fred, and you uh, getting together in a single session? Because that's actually probably not, not really, but okay, we, we can discuss this. So online. Yeah, yeah, no, I, okay. I'm more than happy to try and facilitate that in a number of ways. I know in the past, um, we, we've been able to use various uh, sponsor rooms and that kind of thing, so mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. Cool. Good. All right, um, and then we also have coming up the co-located event um, at EnvoyCon, and that CFP also closes next Friday. So um, it might be interesting to see if it makes sense to submit some talks there, particularly around the wiring an Envoy, um, Envoy in as a network service. That might be a very interesting talk. Huh, okay. That so, makes sense. Yep. So I'll actually just stick that in there. Got it. All right. Um, then coming up shortly after that, um, we have Edge Computing World um, happening in Mountain View, December 10th. That still hasn't quite got um, a CFP. And there's Edge Congress happening in my hometown of Austin, hmm. which means probably we should do something there. Or at least I should do something there. And anyone else who decides to come to town to do a talk there, I can definitely hook you up with the best barbecue in Texas. <laughs> So um, the other reminder I would uh, suggest here is, and, and we can particularly pass this on to Ivana, she has a talk accepted. If we're gonna have an event with an NSM presence, it's always good to um, push a PR to the site that will provide a, an event page for that presence. Cool. I'm still, uh, wait I'm sorry, I'm still waiting for Istacon to publish their schedule in order to add it. Oh, perfect. That's completely fine. And, and sometimes events do take a little while to get those published. I just want to make sure that we're in a good position to promote your talk. Cool. Anything else on events? Any other events that we should add to our list? What about FDIO Mini Summit? Um, I don't think we're going to have an FDIO Mini Summit at KubeCon North America uh, this time. OK. Have you heard about the LFN Cloud Native Network networking days? Uh, you mean the ones that are being done at various lo locations all over the world? Yeah, the one we had one um, at the same time as the FDA and Mini Summit in Barcelona. So I didn't know if there was going to be one. I, I've not heard anything about whether there will be one or not, frankly. OK. I'll try to find out about that. That cool. one would probably be uh, good to speak at if it's running. Yep. Cool. Awesome. So um, Lucina is sadly not able to be with us on the call today, but she did tell me that she's updated uh, the social media reporting. So we do have 265 followers. That's up seven. Uh, we're following 1,324, which is up 100. Uh, we've got 22 new tweets in the last week, and we posted about the new website, the CNCF tug call, and retweets about various other conferences like OSSEU, CNCF, K8, SMI, et cetera. Um, so, and 
Lucina has gently nudged us that she would like to know about when she can tweet on the new release. And then I believe we have coming up today, is this correct? Um, a OBS Orbit podcast interview scheduled? Is that right, Nikolai? Yeah, uh, but we're probably going to postpone it uh, because it was supposed to be me and Fred. Ah, I see. Yeah, um, we're probably postponing that. Cool. Awesome. So, um, all right, so getting to the moving on then, the new website is live. Um, many thanks to Luke Perkins for the new website design. Um, and so, you know, I know that there were a lot of people with small nits they wanted to see, uh, you know, fixed on the page, you know, this or that small thing. So let's get the PRs in for further improvements as we move forward. So then Nikolai, you wanted to talk about KubeCon China updates. Um, yes, and I believe that we have uh, someone here that can help me. A little bit, yeah. We have Jason with us. Okay, um, so um, uh, the the event was uh, re really nice, although shorter than uh, what was planned. Uh, we had a re really long uh, discussions with uh, a number of uh, members uh, of the community and interested in actually into network service mesh. Um, uh, these were mainly. Uh, People with from um, I mean mainly Jason and his colleagues, um, and um, actually um, one of the things that we wanted to discuss uh, was to try to set up uh, um, like every other week to have uh, thirty minutes um, like my morning call, like Europe morning call, so that we can uh, make uh, life easier for um, people in Asia to be able to, you know, bring up topics, ask questions and um, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it apparently this call is late for them. Like it's probably... <laughs> Ludicrously uh, late, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, that was one of the things that we, we kind of came to, to some, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, conclusion there uh, so uh, I am willing to organize that but it will be probably sometime August maybe second part of August due to some holidays planned here mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe we, we will schedule this if no one um, has any any particular objections I would like to use uh, yeah, uh, I would like to use uh, this same uh, call so that it can get recorded and eventually the meeting notes too, so that we don't split uh, over, you know, uh, too many places. Uh, and the main target is really to just uh, give the voice to to the people from that time zone. And uh, yeah, I think that probably it, it could make sense for some people from the, um, from Zort also to to join if if they wish but i guess that this is up to to yeah i i, I think people. this is a super good idea um there are sort of standing time zone challenges um, yeah that that i mean th there there are a bunch of things where you want to try and and make life as reasonable and easy for folks who'd like to participate in asia because we do want to be a global community i think these are super good ideas on how to go about it um, and sort of the only feedback I personally have is actually purely mechanical, which are things like if we've got the videos online, let's get them up on the events page on the Wayne site. So when people go look at the event on the site, they can get to them. Um, if we're going to go and do an Asia friendly call every other week, that's awesome. Let's make sure that we get it listed on the site properly so that it's easy for people to find, um, you know, and so that, you know, folks like Lucina on the social media side can go ahead and tweet it. Um, you know, I, I think this is all just pure goodness. Uh -huh. um, do you have anything you want to add, Jason, since you're sort of helping us bridge this gap? So, uh, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Oh, cool. So basically, yeah, so I do think this is a very good idea because, uh, uh, I mean, this for summertime is okay because it's close, like say 11 p.m. to, to midnight. But when it comes to winter, then 
going to be to uh, 1 a.m. So it's really, uh, I've been, like say, uh, went through a little bit of harsh time uh, since I started joining this community, like say, uh, last year, last year, December. So, yeah, I really appreciate that Nikolai can bring up this idea. And because uh, I know that, because uh, I noticed that for, uh, we got few, uh, I'm not sure how many people uh, in this community right now are, uh, will like say, enjoy, uh, be have better experience if we have a Asian friendly call. But I do believe that if we uh, provide this kind of certain opportunities and uh, we're gonna attract more uh, people uh, in this time zone around this area so that uh, to make their life easier. So, yep, that's it. Um, yeah, I think a uh, very good idea. And I think we can start try to run for, like, say, and see how it works and to see that we can, uh, like, say, attract more people to uh, bring their attention and to make their life easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, absolutely. It's a, it's a great idea. Cool. Thank you for bringing this up, Nikolai. I think it's really good. Um. Yeah. Okay. I, this is this is on my on my list, and I will, I will follow up with this. Um, uh, other than uh, than that, okay. As we said, videos are online, so uh, I had to do my intro. I mean, the the NSM intro talk on my own. Um, Fred didn't uh, didn't make it, uh, and uh, overall o overall they were interesting talks. I really re recommend for people interested to check out at least the keynotes. Uh, there are really interesting things going on there. Uh, everything is there, just just check, check it out. Um, and uh, I guess that that's, uh, that's more or less uh, on the China updates. Um, the telecom user group uh, was there, there were a lot of people. I met some, some people from other communities uh, actually I met uh, I forgot the name the guy the guy from Conti VPP uh, we had a really interesting uh, chat about uh, how things are going how we are using VPP and he also showed some uh, interesting in integration with visualization uh, of uh, like uh, gathering some statistics and data through Prometheus uh, so what talks mm -hmm. awesome so looking back again to you, Nikolai, on the Andromeda release. <laughs> I did go through this morning and try and clean up the backlog a little bit. Um, so it, it, it should be in a little bit better shape if we want to discuss it. Um, yeah. Uh, OK, so we had, so uh, moving on to the, to the Andromeda release. So uh, essentially, we had, a, we had a chat with uh, Taylor the other day, uh, like in China, we met, we met there. And um, what we discuss is that we should just like just 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 tuck whatever we have. Uh, I mean, we have moved very far from from that uh, branch point, which was probably a, more than a month ago. Yeah, it's beginning of July. Yeah, I guess that that we branched some sometime in May, I think. Uh, in in any case, we we are very far from this. So so let's just uh, just just run. I mean, let's just tuck whatever we we, we have there. Upload the, the images yep. to to Docker Hub. So my plan was to actually just um, uh, archive the our um, Helm charts. Uh, and uh, add them as kind of release binaries, uh, mm -hmm. and maybe get something from the release notes, uh, whatever we have there, yep. and just just upload it and just say, okay, that's it. Let's move on to to the next release, which I, mean, the, the, the I, I think that I, it should the, be. The one thing also. I do actually want to try and get done is, and I'm very close to getting it done, is this cleaning up of the Docker repos so that we don't yeah. have tags in the production repo. Mm -hmm. And the, the patch that I have for this right now goes ahead and, you know, pushes to the right repos. And then I'm sort of sorting out a couple of issues with the tests still. Um, but I think I've actually got those sorted. 
Um, so it was just normal CI instability stuff that I was hitting with this before when I was pushing it to master. Now I'm in the process of getting ready to push it up to the 0.1 branch, which should be very similar. Um, and from there, um, you know, from the 0.1 branch, then we should be able to, um, you know, get this all ready. So we, we've got all the, the pieces pushing out of the repos correctly, et cetera. So I would like to take one more week to get that done, if that's OK. Uh, OK. I, I was just thinking that, that, that maybe with the 0 0.1 branch, we can just do things by hand, like just just tuck and, uh, you know. No, no, we, 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 I, I'm completely fine with you on the doing things by hand. The trick is, right now, we push every CI tagged binary to the Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so mean, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't expect I'm anything that. Yeah. To come there. I mean, like, I don't expect any any further further builds there. But yeah, okay. I mean, if you because I I assume that that the current status is that we we have moved like your part should be very far from whatever we have in the, the release branch. Uh, but it, it's actually it shouldn't be hard to backport because it doesn't really do that much. Um, it turns out that part of my confusion was the hooks that I needed to actually point to a particular repo were actually already in place. Um, and so I first tried to reinvent them, and then I discovered that by reinventing them, I had broken the ones that were already there, which was amusing. Um, and and so now I figured that out and moving forward. Cool. So I, I think we're more or less in line. Let me get this one last thing done so we have a clean repo or clean registry we can stick them in, and then I'm perfectly fine pushing the pieces by hand. Okay. Cool. All right. <clears throat> Which brings us around to everyone's favorite topic, the roadmap discussion. Um, and I guess the the I, I copied it over from the way it was previously, um, but I think that maybe we can potentially trim some of the pieces going forward and or figure out how to put together a roadmap doc. Um, I know we had a little bit of discussion about this putting together a roadmap doc in the docs call, and I know that I had. Um, put together the technology tree, which we looked at and, and sort of potentially looking at that as a place to start with the roadmap. Um, so I guess the question is like, do we want to actually, how do we want to proceed with this? Um, so I can tell you that having something that's clearly articulated and, um, you know, just like shows like dates, releases, et cetera, even though I hate product management and I definitely don't want to volunteer myself for this to <laughs> kind of help with some of this. I, I, I mean, yeah. And I'm dead serious. Like I, that is literally like my least idea of fun, but um, I just, as someone who's messed around with Istio for quite a while um, and I know this is being recorded and I like Istio, I'm not bashing on them, but the roadmap has always been kind of all over the place. And um, I'm just, like, just, I have felt a lot of pain do their, their main branch but rarely being stable um, because they constantly have an influx of new features without a very you know defined clear cut this is coming here 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 you know we need to be stable by this point so I think a roadmap where we have like clearly defined goals and um, it also means that certain people can kind of pick and choose when and how heavily they get involved based on like feature X is coming you know and release Y and etc but um I have seen other open source um, projects kind of fall apart because it's just kind of the wild, wild west as far as feature releases go. And, you know, the roadmap changes because some big new customer comes in and says, oh, I really want this. And everything else falls by the wayside, stuff like that. Yep. So I guess the, the question is, are you aware of any open source projects that do this particularly well? Because nope. being open source, because you go steal. Um, I mean, well, I, I would say Kubernetes does a pretty good job of it. Um, I'd say that the Linux kernel does it semi-decent job of it, but it literally has like an entire nation's worth of people like, you know, <laughs> writing it. Um, but I mean, um, yeah, I, I'll be honest. I mean, and, and Kubernetes is by no means perfect, but like, if you look at like how they have is like this features in beta, this features in alpha, this one was just released, you know, this is what we're striving for to get released. I mean, do they always hit their objectives? No, but like you kind of have an idea at least to some degree um, of what's coming and when, right? Versus, I don't know, I'm gonna go ahead and poop on own app, right? Like, I mean, you, you have no <laughs> idea what's gonna happen. Like, 
it, it could they might like completely rewrite the entire back end one weekend and not tell anybody i mean i don't know like in, in fairness to own up when you have as many moving parts as they have it's super challenging um, well, and that's that's what I'm saying, right? It's like that. That is an example of when the good idea ferry, without a clearly defined roadmap, can get you in trouble, right? Not having like the proper gates in place, because ONAP is cool because it's microservices, right? Well, the problem is, is microservices just keep getting jammed in there, and you know, microservices keep getting changed, and there isn't like this really well laid out. And I mean, it's been getting better, but that, that's, I think Kubernetes is an example of people who do less terribly and ONAP is an example of where things can go horribly awry. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> is there a particular um, Kubernetes roadmap document that you could point us to that you particularly like? Because I'm very much in the market for let's find someone who, who kicks ass and copy them. Yeah, that one I don't know. I, I tend to just read the release notes. Okay. Also, just so you, just for uh, your information, um, if Linux is the largest uh, nation, Kubernetes is the second largest in the open source world. Uh, it's the second largest open source community in in existence at this point. Sure, but like in the case though, Linux is like China, and <laughs> I don't know, Kubernetes is like Belgium. Like it is insane how many people like pull PRs on the kernel. Yeah, that is true. All of the drivers are belonging to them. Cool. All right. So I guess the, the, the I want to keep raising this and we'll try and get something pulled together um, that we can sort of look at and point to. Um, if you guys have things that you don't feel are represented in the technology tree, um, I think it's generally writable. Let's try and get them collected into a picture there. Because I do know we have some other specs out there, like um, the, the there's a there's a spec out there to look at um, rewire uh, basically having a selector based on network characteristics rather than just round robin. Um, just as an example, that is sort of looking at very interesting things. Cool. <clears throat> Anything else on forward roadmap stuff before we move on? Uh, no, maybe maybe just mention that uh, the DNS thing is uh, moving forward. <laughs> if uh, for people that are not monitoring our PRs, mm -hmm. we already yeah. have um, some work done there, which looks very promising. There's, I think, also a work in progress on the security that's getting very close, which is super exciting. Um, uh, really? Is there a PR? I, I don't oh. know. Yeah, um, yeah. Where is the yep. PR? Oh, okay. Yeah. And also the interdomain PR. Yep. Yeah, I'm. My understanding is that the the interdomain stuff is now has now been witnessed to be working between Packet and AWS, um, which is super exciting as well. Uh, I just want. I think that that I have posted some c comments at least on the DNS. Maybe the internal main. Okay, I don't remember, but I mean, I just would like to call for for documentation there. I mean, these are these are really interesting features. Lots of people are going to to just look at how these things work and want to use them. So we really need the best documentation that we can do uh, while developing it. Yep, I I I think that's yeah. Yeah, I think that's actually probably pretty important uh, to get the documentation right. So yes, let's definitely do that. Especially the, the DNS, I think people are gonna wanna understand how it works just because it's important to them. Security likewise, um, people are going to really, really care because people are gonna be taking a look at the security and how it's done, so. I don't know if you have seen, there was an announcement I think yesterday that Linkerd uh, completed a CNCF-sponsored uh, security uh, audit or something along those lines. So, yep. you know, these things happen and, <laughs> yeah, if we are moving forward, we'll probably have to face this at some point. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It'd be good if we could, if, they, if the list is made public, uh, if we could get a list of that and see if we're making any of the same mistakes. 
Yep. My guess is from previous dealing with previous security folks, it kind of will probably depend on how serious the problems are um, when they get made public. Because I know that typically, if you've really screwed up, uh, the nice security people will tap you on the shoulder privately first and give you a chance to fix it. 30 days. Nah, these ones I'm sure are nicer than that, especially since uh, the source of the money probably came from the CNCF. Well, I mean, it, it, plus I expect the, the most CNCF projects behave responsibly. <clears throat> I, I do spend some of my life hanging out with pen testers uh, and their basic position is, yes, we give you a deadline. If we actually believe you're moving expeditiously and you say, could I please have 45 days instead? Um, most pen test, most folks doing security, uh, you know, finding security exploits are gonna be pretty kind. It's when you just ignore them that they, they go nuclear on you. Cool. All right then. Um, so anything else that folks want to cover today? Otherwise I'm inclined to yield back the time. Uh, maybe we should touch briefly on the fact that uh, um, the use case call is uh, frozen for July from what uh, I saw. Oh, then we definitely should update this. In, um, we, is that reflected in the use case calls uh, meeting notes? So if somebody follows the meeting notes link, they, they know that? Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I see two links here, so I'm, I'm not sure which one is actually. Yeah. Um, so what is a doc? Um, the other is also a doc. So we don't seem to have a link anywhere there to the actual uh, meeting minutes. Let me see if we can find that on the community page. Um, oh, yeah, this is a doc, yeah. Yeah, so the, the current community page is just reflecting next meeting of June 24th. So if it is going to be on hiatus for July, um, someone should probably ask Romke if you would please update the meeting minutes to reflect that um, so that people don't just arrive and find an empty room. Cool. All right. Um, anything else before we conclude? Nope. All right. Thank you very much. Talk to you guys next week. Thank you, guys. Bye.